Yo, what's happening? It's your man Valentine, baby. We're getting ready to sit down. The world-renowned violinist, Michael Fraser. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about yourself? It's good, man. Nice to see you, man. But how long have you been playing the violin? I've been playing the violin for 19 years now. 19 years? Yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why the violin? You know what? Actually, my parents signed me up before I was born, so I really didn't have much of a choice what instrument. But oh, really? Yeah, they thought that I would be versatile with the violin and be able to choose the kind of music that I want to play. So I really chose the music that I would play, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and what type of music do you play? Uh, I like to call it gypsy disco. OK. But it's kind of a hybrid between gypsy and swing and house music. Nice. So lots of styles in the jazz category mixed with house music. And that's basically how I would define my style. OK. And how, how were you discovered by somebody? Discovered. I don't know. I feel like every day I'm discovering people yeah. myself. You know, just yeah. meeting people and uh, and making connections and networking. And do, some people have lots of experience, and I feel humble to be in their presence. But nice. you know, sometimes uh, I meet people who are nobodies, and they have amazing experiences as well. As well. So okay. Yeah. Now, I mean, how? Why did your journey take you so long to get here, though? You know, I, th I feel like I, I, there's points in my life where I could have just blast forward, but because I didn't, I'm thankful. My parents never uh, exploited the fact that I was playing music as a child, and there was a, and they could have, but um, I feel like I'm far more humble because of my experience, and I'm able to uh, take my time learning and getting better at my craft. And I think that I might not have got so good yeah. if I had thought, oh, well, I'm so good all the time before really I'd practiced. And nice. I've practiced. Nice. You know? so. I like that. Now, where can, I mean, where can some artists, Canadian artists, showcase their skills? You know, uh, TV shows like this on the grind are great, great, um, uh, there's also uh, radio programs like CITR that I've spent a lot of time at. Um, and uh, uh, personally, I enjoy going to open mics because you, you show up and you just blast people away with beautiful music. When yeah. they're, you, you, they're, and then you get to inspire other people and talk to them and tell them about things like On the Grind. Nice. Yeah. That's nice, man. Now, we already know at an early, you, before you were born, this was already going to be your thing. Now, do you know, though, it was actually going to be a career. It took a lot of practice when I was younger. Yeah. So like most kids who, who go through the uh, classical methods and, and such, I didn't enjoy practicing as much when I was younger as I do now. Right. But um, I think there was a point when I was maybe 11 or 12 where I found one of my favorite jazz violinists, an American uh, guy by the name of Stuff Smith. Okay. And I listened to Stuff all night long. I would have the CD. He plays with Oscar Peterson and Dizzy Gillespie. Mm -hmm. It's like real jazz music. And uh, I would listen to his music all night long. And it was really that point where I was like, I want to be like that. Nice. <laughs> you know? Now, we're going to get the on the grind question, man. And the on the grind question is, all the people that are out there, they're not playing for 19 years. They just, they're out there doing their thing and not getting no love from nobody. What can you tell them to inspire them to stay on the grind? I think just fulfill your passions, right? You know, keep, keep playing to be playing, not playing to be famous. I mean, you can do that too, but there is something that's fulfilling about playing because you love it. Right. And people notice that. When I play a show and I'm having a great time because I'm doing it for me, people come up to me and they talk to me more than if I'm doing it for them. If I do it, I'm like, hey, look at me. Yeah. I'm, I'm amazing and you should be watching me. People see that for what it is and they see me for what I am. And for me, it's about the passion. Nice. Now. If you can tell me a moment that, let's say, what can you tell me about this moment right now that will make it forever ingrained in our minds? That's a deep question. <laughs> For me, it's ingrained in my mind because I feel like the single that I've just released, Django Style, that I played for you guys, uh, is really the first release of mine that I can call my own. Yeah. Because I've released album after album that I've been involved with different projects. Uh, 
but this one's really something that I composed all myself, and uh, it's available online for download, michaelfraser.bandcamp.com. And uh, so, yeah, it's really important to me, this moment right here, because of that. Okay, so we were going to ask you about what song you're going to do, so that's the song you're going to do, right? Yeah, I'm going to do Django style. Okay, and now you wrote that? I did, yes. And how long did it take you to write that? You know, some of the best songs that I write, they just sort of come out. They're, uh, it's really an evening kind of thing. You yeah. write it in the evening, and then over the course of two, three months, it comes together, and it comes together. But really, the writing process was probably within an evening that I just sort of was inspired and it happened. I was just going to say, where, I mean, inspiration comes from everywhere, but where do you get your inspiration to write your songs? My songs, I'm very inspired by uh, old gypsy jazz music, um, as well as uh, 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 swing and big band. Yeah. Um, I'm really into into cool jazz and uh, and disco disco house music. It, okay. it ends up getting broader and broader and broader. Yeah. I love all styles of music. Right now, I'm collecting reggae records and I'm collecting uh, uh, jazz records. That's so mainly. We, so we can expect some other styles from you later on. Then. Oh yes, definitely, okay. definitely. Then, now, quickly, some obstacles and sacrifices you had, you had to go through. Wow. Um, I feel like every day there's different sacrifices, small to large. You know, you just. I mean, I'm a working musician, so sometimes I have to sacrifice the luxury of having a stable job. I'm always trying to, to make things happen, and so and you know sometimes you just have to be okay. Well, nothing's happening this month, nice. so that's just a sacrifice you have to make, and and uh, they're small sacrifices. I feel pretty lucky. I'm in a very beautiful place in the world, and uh, I'm a very lucky person. Nice. Now, and there's Twitter. You got Twitter and everything yeah, else. Yeah, I'm MF Violin, so Michael Fraser MF violin okay and people can tweet me i love i love tweeting back so yeah nice i want to thank you for coming through man thanks so much man thanks for definitely me. it was real nice appreciate you coming thank you you get ready we're gonna get you out of here and go do your performance man cool. okay
Nice job. Michael Fraser. Thank you. Nice job, man. Nice job. What's that song called again? Django Style. Nice. We can get that. You can get it online for free at michaelfraser.bandcamp.com. Nice. It's my man, Michael Fraser. We'll get ready to come back with uh, Dr. Jody Shamra, Million Dollar Neighborhood. Nice.